Japanese RPGs together into one cliche of a game. A game where androgynous men with pointy hair and scantily clad women battle evil mages to save... Think, I don't know. Sometimes it's magical stones. For example, there's also a fair amount of village saving. But the point is, while Japanese role-playing games are frequently similar, they are not all equal. Here's a review of a Japanese RPG that does a lot of stuff right. It's Grandia 3. When you fly in the sky, you're dreaming, you Hi, can we turn down the bubblegum pop anthem for a minute? Thanks. Grandia 3 is the story of Yuki, a boy with a dream who wants to fly airplanes and escape his humdrum life as a potter's apprentice. Unfortunately, he's trapped in a Japanese RPG, which means if he wants to achieve his dream, he'll have to save the world first. On his maiden flight, his mom stows away in the plane and causes it to crash. Yeah, that's supposed to be his mom. I guess she had him when she was nine. They stumble across the requisite mysterious magic girl, and adventure ensues. Eventually. This game has taken a lot of heat for having a cliched story, but it's hardly any worse than the dozens of other Japanese RPGs that have come down the pike. I give you all my word as a sailor. Here and now. Grandia 3's only glaring flaw is that the story takes a long time to get rolling. It's just not possible, Yuki! Early on, the best part of the game is the store, because you can play along with the music. Tell me if this gets annoying. And I'm done. Once things get rolling, the dull spots are few and far between as a cavalcade of colorful characters cavort across the screen. Hey, that hurt! What's the big idea? <laughs> That's just his way of saying hello. So, has anything odd happened recently? Uh, hello? Did you miss the last 15 seconds? Huh? But if you came for the story, you'll stay for the combat. Grandia 3 uses a sort of pseudo real-time strategy-based group dynamic combo stringing action-packed yet thought-provoking battle system. All enemies are visible before you fight them, and if you whack them with your sword before you engage, you can surprise them, which makes no sense, but it's a nice touch. Or you can just stun them and avoid a fight altogether, giving the player control over how many random battles they fight. What a concept. No two fights unfold the same way. You can prevent enemies from completing attacks by canceling them with criticals. After you bounce them in the air, your teammates can tack on brutal aerial combos. At this rate, I'll be mobbed to death by fans. Who was it who decided having RPG characters talk was a good idea? Why not make things easier for everyone and stay out of our way? How about the unwed 20-something mother watches her mouth? The first part of the game is a bit of a slog through swamp boredom. Hmm? But the actual gameplay makes Grandia 3 so worth playing. Just ignore the story and enjoy some of the best monster beaten on the PS2. A four out of five. You can play your song again now. Yuki's mom is hot. For an animated fictional character. Mm. I don't know if I'm comfortable with Japanese RPGs showing moms that young and attractive. Mm, I am pro milk. Yeah. I just wish the Japanese was sick of the sexual fetishes I expect from them, like schoolgirl uniforms or asexual men or subservience, generally. No, Japan is the world's leading producer of repressed sexual energy. We need them to keep pushing forward the cause of perversion into new, uncharted waters.